So my name is Ishai, and I'm the co-founder of Dimension. And uh, this talk is going to be about EIBC and IBC in a new dimension. Um, so EIBC is a paper that I wrote with the team about uh, optimistic rollups uh, in an IBC setting. Um, but let's talk a little bit about context. What is Dimension? And how does it co connect to IBC? So Dimension is a network of modular blockchains called Rollaps. Um, we're in the modular summit, so it's worthy to say that these modular blockchains, they post data to a DA layer like Celestia or like Avail or any other DA modules or DA capabilities that we're going to have in the future. Um, and these rollups are modular by execution as well, so they can choose their execution environment and they settle to the Dimension Hub, which acts kind of as a router to this internet of rollups, uh, to this network of uh, modular blockchains that is called Dimension. So the Dimension Hub um, is a settlement layer with an enshrined support for our rollup framework, which is called the RDK. Um, this is a unique architecture. I think. Uh, seeing a lot of these lectures here and a lot of talks in the Modular Summit, I noticed that Dimension has a very unique architecture as one of, or I would say, probably the only settlement layer that focuses on uh, modular settlement uh, and uh, validating bridge uh, for rollups. So that's, that's interesting, and it also enshrines uh, the rollup framework that we built. Um, I think the difference between Dimension to Ethereum for that matter in terms of settlement is that Dimension doesn't use smart contracts for rollups. It actually uses the chain itself um, to support these rollups and uh, to gain more decentralization for sequencers from day one. So this is kind of uh, um, why we built Dimension, but let's talk about EIBC and what it is. So EIBC is an IBC-based protocol for supporting optimistic rollups. Um, what does this mean and uh, why do we need uh, this protocol? Why can't we use just IBC? Uh, this is a question that comes to mind. Uh, why can't we use vanilla IBC for rollups? Just reminding you all, um, Dimension rollups are optimistic rollups, so uh, this question comes to mind. And the answer is we can actually use IBC. We can use IBC and we use IBC. So from, from the Dimension Hub to the rollups themselves, we use regular IBC. It is not an issue. Um, but from the rollups themselves back to the Dimension Hub, uh, we can use IBC, but we have a setback. We have a setback that is common to every optimistic rollup because of a characteristic uh, that optimistic rollups have, um, which is the fraud proof dispute period. So optimistic uh, rollups are the most popular scaling solution. Uh, I guess most of you know that uh, on Ethereum, uh, in terms of TVL, in terms of popularity, you see Arbitrum, you see Optimism, you see all these rollups. Uh, they're very, very popular, but they have a few issues. Um, one of them, as I mentioned, is the dispute period. Uh, so the dispute period basically prevents us from trusting the rollup uh, immediately. We need to allow other participants in the network uh, to submit a fraud proof. So it's a one of an assumption that somebody's listening or somebody's uh, capable of submitting a fraud proof to the settlement layer. Um, but there's another setback um, that we that's not that known or not that common of people uh, to talk about or to think about is the verifier's dilemma. The verifier's dilemma is the situation where a sequencer is honest and is being honest for quite a while, let's say that, and other full node operators don't have any incentive to run a full node for a rollup. Contrary to an L1 or a Cosmos chain where they can validate and re earn rewards, earn fees, a rollup full node does not have any incentive to continue running this full node when he knows that the sequencer is honest. He's assuming that this, this might be a possibility for him to catch fraud and maybe make money. But the more we go in time, the more we understand, OK, the sequencer is honest. And most of the verifiers will just stop operating these nodes. These nodes cost money. Um, so they just eventually stop and the verify, and then the full node or the sequencer, by that uh, time of point, point of time, they can be tempted to start uh, cheating or doing any malicious uh, state transitions. So this is the verifier's dilemma. 
Um, we have to make sure that in an internet of rollups, like we envision in Dimension, where we say, Cosmos is just uh, the tip of the iceberg. We can build an internet of rollups which are connected to the Cosmos ecosystem via IBC and via the Dimension Hub. We must figure out a way to understand who will verify these rollups and to understand how um, we can trust these rollups or these sequencers if they don't have a lot of full nodes out there. Uh, so these are two big problems if you want to address uh, an internet of rollups that is based on the optimistic approach. So we have a solution, and this is what I want to talk about today. Uh, the solution is called EIBC. Uh, e is for escrow. So EIBC is an IBC wrapper on the settlement layer that basically transforms the settlement layer into a clearing house of IBC withdrawals uh, that are uh, tradable or that uh, you can use to clear them before the dispute period. So we want to address the dispute period. We want people to um, get an instant uh, transfer experience and not damage the UX for everybody because of the dispute period we have for optimistic rollups. Um, so this is a short kind of uh, a brief about EIBC. Let's understand how it works in detail. Uh, so for understanding that, we need to address the assumptions. So the first assumption is that users are willing to pay an additional fee for instant withdrawals. This is obvious. If you want to get out of a roll-up, if you want to get out of an exchange, you would pay a little bit more to get out of that roll-up or that exchange or whatever it is, you would pay a fee. Uh, the second assumption is that verifying a roll-up eliminates the rollback risk for the verifier. So assuming I am suspecting something or whatever it is, I'm running a full note of the roll-up, I have now verified the state, I eliminated the risk of it to, uh, I eliminated the risk of rollback. Uh, the third assumption is that verifiers who encounter fraud will submit a fraud proof. Uh, I think these are pretty feasible assumptions that we can take and uh, it will help us move forward with the flow of EIBC and how it works. So let's talk about the flow. So Alice is a user on RollupX. Uh, she sends an EIBC withdrawal requesting uh, 10 dime out of the rollup. Um, so Alice says, I want to withdraw 10 dime, and I'm willing to pay one dime fee, okay? This is an example. Uh, it's not the implementation, but just an example. So Alice wants to withdraw 10 dime. She sends it as a regular transaction to the roll app um, with, the, with the fee, with the fee requirement. Uh, later on, the EIBC message is relayed to the, to the settlement layer escrow module, uh, which queues it. And uh, this is an important fact, an important um, detail here. The EIBC message is relayed to the settlement layer, to the escrow module, and not to Alice itself. So Alice is not getting the, the EIBC uh, withdrawal. Remember, remember, we have to wait for finalization. There is a fraud proof dispute period. So we need to make sure that we only accept the real IBC message after the fraud dispute period. Super important, so we need to figure out how we can counter pass this, um, this hurdle. Okay, now Bob, which is a liquidity provider, and uh, remember Bob because he's also a verifier. Well, remember him. Bob is a liquidity provider who decides to fulfill the EIBC message, the EIBC transfer. He's willing to purchase the delayed IBC message that Alice has already sent. Remember, the settlement layer escrows these IBC messages and he can actually auction them. So Bob is capable of purchasing a future withdrawal and paying nine dime right now. Remember, Alice wanted to pay a fee for getting out of the roll-up immediately. So she, she's willing to get nine dime for a 10 dime in the future, uh, which Bob is willing to wait for. So Bob actually sends the nine dime to the settlement layer escrow module. Um, the EIBC module on the settlement layer deliver, uh, delivers Bob's tokens, right? Bob sent nine tokens and now delivers the nine tokens to Alice immediately, right? So Alice wasn't uh, capable or she didn't want to wait. She got her nine dime immediately. 
And the original EIBC message of Alice, the 10 dime, is now waiting for finalization, but it's rerouted for Bob's address. So what we did here, we made the settlement layer a clearinghouse for roll-up withdrawals. So we actually, we, we took um, one need of Alice is, I want to get out of the roll-up immediately. I'm willing to pay. The settlement layer escrows the message. It knows it can't accept it because of the optimistic assumption. And Bob is willing to take that additional risk and additional waiting time uh, for that fee. OK, but what happens if there's no one who wants to fulfill the, the EIBC transfer, the EIBC liquidity transfer? In this scenario, the message would, would just wait transfer the IBC message would just wait as usual and would finalize and would be transferred to Alice uh, according to the optimistic assumption that will wait for the dispute period. So this, this EIBC protocol is, is, is fully compatible with IBC. It just uses a wrapper on the settlement layer to create a market for the future withdrawals. It's a market and this is what it is and this is I think what makes it super exciting because it elegantly provides economic and crypto economic assumptions or game theory to create a better system. So let's look at the result. The result is Alice received her tokens immediately without waiting the dispute period. Alice is now capable of transferring VIBC, of course. Uh, her funds or tokens, whatever she wants, to any other roll-up in the ecosystem. That's pretty amazing because once you withdraw out of roll-up X or whatever roll-up you are, you can easily deliver the tokens or transfer the tokens to any other roll-up that's connected to the, to the ecosystem. So by solving what we did in the first leg, in the first flow, how do we get out of the roll-up? We actually get a roll-up to roll-up system that works fluently. Um, so Alice also didn't need to trust any centralized actor for bridging. This is super important because, uh, you know, right now everybody's using uh, Arbitrum, Optimism, whatever rollup on Ethereum or whatever rollup that is optimistic. They're using it with the liquidity provider that they trust. So we leverage the IBC echo, uh, mechanism and we leverage the trust in the validator set of the Dimension Hub to create a trust minimized environment for people to use and uh, basically to leverage it. Um, the other result from Bob's side is Bob made money. I think it's super important to understand that we want to allow or we want to enable as much ecosystem participants that will make money. This, will, this creates a community, it creates an economy, um, it, 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 it you know, rewards the players that are in the ecosystem and it's good. But Bob, apart from making money, has a crucial incentive right now to verify the roll-up. And this is, I think this is what makes EIBC super special and super important uh, and elegant is that we kill um, two birds with one stone and we allow the ecosystem to verify itself. So according to usage, according to if a roll-up is popular, you would know that it's being verified because somebody wants to get out and somebody's willing to give liquidity. So you would know that this rollup is safe because it's being verified. So we're using crypto economics, we're using game theory um, instead of computation to create this incentive mechanism to verify thousands of, or ten th tens of thousands of rollups uh, with crypto economics and uh, by that, solving the verifier's dilemma. Uh, so the verifier dilemma is solved. Um, the fraud proof dispute period is mostly solved if there's interest in the rollup, right? So if somebody's in the rollup, if somebody wants to take the risk of running it, it's also solved. So it's also kind of a on demand situation. And uh, yeah, and we get a better, better ecosystem and a better experience for our users. Uh, creating this uh, internet of rollups uh, with immediate withdrawals and usage of the original IBC mechanism. Um, I guess we're getting to the end of this uh, presentation. Thank you. Uh, maybe time for Q&A. Don't be too rough. 
I know you got, you're going to have hard questions, especially you in the back there. Yeah. Um, any Q&A? Any, anybody wants to ask something? I assume not. Okay. Thank you.